So now that we have a basic movie rating app here uh, where we can enter in these movies from our user interface, we can read them, we can update them, we can delete them. I want to now shift into thinking about how do we let users log in to our application and have their own collection of movies that is unique to their account. So if I log in with my account, I will only see a couple of these uh, that I've entered. And then if you logged in with your account, you'd see whatever movies you've entered. And uh, those should be secure so that I can't edit your movies, you can't edit my movies. So that's what we're going to be focusing on. And we're going to take advantage of another Firebase uh, service. So we have now, we've used Cloud uh, Firestore. Um, and now we're going to be using authentication from Firebase. And authentication refers to that process of how uh, a user logs into your system and is authenticated so that they can access particular data um, inside of your application. And Firebase provides a number of ways to do this. So they have a drop-in solution. We're not going to be using that. Um, because if we build our own, we have better control over the style and flow of the user interface. So we're going to be using the SDK down here, which provides a number of different ways to log in. There's email and password. There are federated identity providers, which are kind of like those social logins that you're familiar with on many services. We are going to be using Google. Uh, that'll be the easiest for us to test because it's really easy to set up since um, Firebase is a Google service. All we have to do is really just click one button to get this enabled inside of our project. There's also phone number authentication and um, a, a ability for you to set up your own authentication system or have anonymous authentication. So we are going to be spending a lot of our time with the documentation for web here. And we're not going into the pre-built UI one. Uh, we're going into getting started, which gives us an idea of how to set up authentication. And then there are individual pages for each um, type of service. So if you want to do password authentication or Google sign-in, you'll, you'll click through to these different pages. So outline of what we need to do, there are a few things that we have to do. We have to set up our um, account here, so our, our Firebase project, to have authentication. Then we need to update our Firebase module uh, to actually enable authentication in our project. We're going to have to create a login page um, that allows the user to log in. Uh, and when they log in, we'll have to store their user information. And then we're going to have to refactor our application. So instead of having a movies collection here where we store all the movies in the application, we're going to have a users collection here. And each user will have their own movies collection under their user account. That'll make it so that we can have separate sets of movies for each user. And then we'll wrap things up by looking at security. How do we make it so that you know, user one has their movies separate from user two, and they can't edit each other's movies. So getting started, um, I have a starter project here uh, that will be linked that you can download. This is a version that has the custom hooks um, that we did uh, last week. So with all of these, you want to run npm install to get all the node modules pulled in and then start up React scripts. And while that's running, we'll take a quick tour here. Um, so you need to make sure that you have copied env.template here to .env.local. And then you filled in all of your React information here so that your application is authenticated uh, with your project. So you can actually make calls to the database um, if your application crashes and you get uh, permission errors or that your application can't start up. That, that is probably one of the reasons why. So let's make sure this is starting up. OK, so we've got the application loading here. Um, same structure as before. It has uh, our listing, the ability to add movies, edit movies, delete movies. But now there's going to be a login page that's been added to the nav. 
and we're going to fill this in by creating a little login logout system here. So the other thing that I want to mention before we get started is hooks. So we did custom hooks last week. So um, check out that video if you get lost. Uh, but the way that custom hooks work is that we are able to create a, our own hook, like use state, use effect, that um, manages some state, you know, does some things, and provides that to us. So here, let's look at... Uh, let's look at use all movies first. So this has a couple of pieces of state. It has movies, it has loading, it has an error message. It runs an effect here when the component, uh, when this hook is uh, mounted to the page and when it's unmounted, it unsubscribes. And what it does is our real time update. So this is essentially just the code that we had inside of our movie listing component here. We had all of that stuff up here, but if we move it into our own hook, we separate that logic from our rendering component so that we can have a bit more modular of a code base, which makes it so that if we needed to divine, uh, design another component that also had access to all the movies, it would be easy to do because that hook is now separate from our rendering component here. So use all movies, manages this state, makes sure that it talks to our movies collection. And um, when um, it gets all of those states, oh, uh, actually, let me back up. That's not a good way to explain it. Uh, so it has these pieces of state and every time the hook updates, it returns them down here in an array. So movies is loading error message. So when we use our hook here, that means that these variables are coming from that hook and they're always going to be up to date with whatever the latest version in that hook is. So as soon as uh, we have movies available, our component is going to re-render here and that variable will be filled in. So this structure we used with movie listing, we also had one for um, getting access to one specific movie, which has a similar loading error message movie data state. It has an effect that runs that goes ahead and gets an individual document from our collection. And then at the end, it returns the movie data is loading error message. So we used this on our edit page here to get access to the movie data. So essentially what's in that hook is the code that was in here for loading the movie. And then we also created a save movie hook that manages actually going into the movie collection and either adding a new movie or updating an old movie. And what this returned was a function that would run the save, so this function, a boolean for whether we're saving or not and a message about whether it was successful or whether it failed and so then we could use save movie both on our edit page here so you save movie and then all of the code here that was related to saving is now tucked away inside of that hook uh, so we used it here and then we also used it in our add movie here Okay, so that's enough for review. We've got our project set up, our, our environment variables are set up, our dependencies are installed. We reviewed some of the latest changes to this project. So now we could start focusing on the new stuff. So there is a page in here, an account page that loads account info, which is this placeholder component here. It, it puts account info on the page. Um, it has a spot for an error message, it has a spot for some contents to be dynamically filled in, and it has two placeholder functions for sign in and sign out that are asynchronous. So we'll be filling this in as we build out that account. So to get started, let's actually flip back to our browser and go through the documentation together. Looking at this page, we can see that it's telling us um, that there are a lot of different sign-in methods that we have to make sure we have our SDK and our configuration set up in our project. And then um, it gives us two code snippets for um, signing up and signing in. 
So if we wanted to sign folks up with email and password, uh, both of these snippets are talking to uh, Firebase.auth. So Firebase.auth gives you back an object that has methods for signing in and controlling authorization. Um, so here we are calling a create user with email and password and here sign in with email and password. And both of these return a promise that you can um, await for it to resolve and catch any errors. And then the last bit on this page uh, that it's telling us about is that there is also on that authorization object that gets returned from firebase.auth, uh, there is a method for on authorization state change. So if you listen, you return, a, um, you uh, pass in a function here to on auth state change, Firebase will call this function anytime the authorization state changes. So if our user logs in or our user logs out, this function would be called. So we're going to be using that to monitor uh, whether the user is signed in or not and sync it up to our React application. And you can see that inside of that user object, there's going to be a few pieces of data that come along depending on how that user has been authorized. So provider data is referring to if you signed in with Google or you signed in with Facebook, what did Google or Facebook um, provide? on that user. Really importantly, there's this user ID, uh, unique user ID. So this is what we're going to be using to store data in our database per user. Um, and then there's some other things like display name and email um, that may come along uh, with that login, depending on how you've set up your login. So from that overview, then there are pages for the specific ones. So we're going to be using Google sign in. So I'm going to flip down to that Google sign in page. It's telling us to set this up. We have to add Firebase to our project, and then we have to enable Google sign-in in in our Firebase console. So we're going to go to the console, open up authorization, sign-in method, enable Google sign-in, and save. So I'm flipping back here. I'm going to authentication in my sidebar, and then sign-in method. And then over here, this is where you're going to hit edit configuration and you are going to go ahead, you, when you load it up, it'll be um, disabled. You'll hit enable and then you'll hit uh, save down here to uh, add this to your project. One note is that because Firebase is a Google service, there's, there's really no other setup that we have to do here. But if you wanted to add, say, Facebook login or Twitter login, you actually have to register a developer account with Facebook or a developer account with Twitter, and then put in some configuration here to link that developer account from Facebook to your application so that you are allowed to log in with Facebook. So we're not going to cover those. We're going to stick with Google, which will be the easiest for us to get up and running here. So we've done that. We set up our, our um, project so that we have authorization on our dashboard. And then now what we're going to do is go through and add that to our application. So looking at these steps, what it's telling us to do is create an instance of the Google provider object. So the Firebase um, API provides a object for or um, a class for all of the different providers. And we need to reach in and grab one of those for Google. So this object is going to be the thing that allows us to do the authentication. Um, we can skip all of this. This allows you to set up some um, additional scopes, like what, what you're actually requesting when you uh, um, link your Google account. We're going to leave it at the defaults. Same for language, other parameters. We'll skip all of that. And then come down to here where we're, we're getting access to that authorization object. We are signing in with a pop-up and we're passing in that provider. So this code, uh, the way that it works is that your provider here, it could be a Google provider or it could be the Facebook provider or Twitter or, or GitHub. You're going to pass in the specific one that you want to use here. And then it's going to give you this returns a promise so you can await it to get the result which will have your user in there. Um, and then you can catch any errors. So if um, that pop-up opens up and 
they close the pop-up without actually authorizing, that'll throw an error, which ends up down here. Okay, so let's start doing this. So we're gonna have to go back to our Firebase um, module inside of our starter files here. So opening up data, Firebase. First thing that we have to do is import our authorization um, module here. So this brought in the base of Firebase. This enabled Firestore. This enables authorization. Then we can create our provider here. So we've got our Google provider, which is equal to firebase.auth.googleprovider. And then we're also gonna create that authorization object that we saw. So let's just bring these side by side. So this line of code here, creating our provider is happening here. And this provider we are gonna export so that anyone can get access to it inside of our application. And then if we scroll down, firebase.auth, we are gonna to need to get the object that's returned from that to use our sign-in methods. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm storing that object, our authorization object, so that we can export it and make it accessible elsewhere in our application. So coming down to this export, let's add our provider and our auth. And while I'm looking at this, the other thing that I, I will usually do is also add our um, Firebase library as an export so that it's easy to get access to this configured Firebase um, that we have imported here without having to import from Firebase app. So if we give this a save, there should be no errors in our console and there should be no errors on our page. We've got some warnings from no unused variables, but those are from things that are in our starter files that we just haven't filled out yet. So we can ignore those. So let's flip over to our account info page where we actually wanna use some of that authorization to actually log into our page. So I want to bring in our provider and auth from data Firebase. And then what I want to do, the, the code that we were seeing in our browser, let's bring this up side by side as well, is once we have that authorization object, we can call sign in with pop-up and pass in our provider. Uh, so we're going to need to create a button on the page, link it to this, but we can start putting in some of that placeholder code here for signing in. So this gives us back a promise. So we're going to have our try catch and we'll do some error logging if we catch on an error and here we will await off dot sign in with provider or whoops sign in with a uh, pop-up that's and then we pass in provider sign in with pop-up pass in the provider and let's um, let's store the result so we can see here that uh, the result has an access token and a user so let's grab the result and let's print that out to the page. So we should, when we trigger this sign in, we should either see a result printout or an error printout to the console. And let's just test this. So we're gonna put this elsewhere, but let's put um, a button on the page that on click calls our sign in. Give this a save. So I've got my console open. I can see that button. If I 
click this, we get a pop-up showing up for uh, authenticating with Google. And you would either pick the account that you're already signed in with or um, sign into a new account by clicking use other account. And let's actually see what happens if we close this first. So it's pausing and then we get an error that's printing out from our uh, catch. So it's telling us that some the close the authorization was closed by the user, so the login couldn't be completed. And if we sign in and we go ahead and click one of these, it takes a second, and then we get our result printing out to the console. So we can see that we have our user object here. We have our credential that has a token. Um, and our user object has some things like a display name, an email address, and if we scroll down a little bit more here, there is also a unique user ID. Um, so this is for each user, we'll have this unique ID that we'll be able to use for storing data in our database. So I can see CLYT4, and then if I come back to my dashboard and I look at my users page, now that someone has signed up, I can actually see that user here inside of my uh, users page. And there's that user ID. So this is what we're going to want to store inside of Firestore for um, the ID of our collection. Um, or the, the, where our, we're going to have a user's collection and then the document for this account will be stored under this user ID. So while we're at it, let's pull up some of the reference here. So I'm going to click on reference and we want to go to JavaScript. And then we have been looking in Firestore uh, up till now, but now we're looking inside of Firebase.auth. And if we go to the overview, um, we can see some of the different um, modules, classes, interfaces, etc., that are inside of Firebase.auth. So if we look, I'm going to open up our Firebase code again. So we used Google Auth Provider, and we also used Firebase.auth here to get an authorization object. So um, here is our documentation for that authorization call. So we, we called the auth method, which gives us a auth object. And this has a few things, um, like it has these methods for signing in, and we used the, uh, where is it, sign in with pop-up here. And we can see that that returns a promise that resolves to user credentials. And it also gives us information on the errors. Uh, so here are the different errors that that could possibly throw, like our canceled pop-up request. There's also one uh, for pop-up blocked. Oh, actually, this is the one we saw. We saw pop-up closed by user. There's one for block um, unauthorized domain. So a couple of different authorization errors that you probably want to handle to give more information to the user. We're just going to kind of throw a generic error message at this point. So this thing that we're printing out here, this result, is a user credential instance. So if I check out the user credentials, um, we saw that it had a credential object. So up here, there was the credential object, there was the user object. So that user object here, this is the thing that has the display name, the email, um, the user ID here, the unique user ID, um, provider data, photo URL, some other things that'll be filled in based on how that user was signed up um, and how their user information was set. So we'll wanna keep that in mind uh, as we're working that this, this user object is really gonna be the thing that we need to keep around and store. So we really want result user, that's the thing here that we care about, and that's the thing that we want to cache in our application so that we know, hey, here's the user, we can use this to store their movies um, under their ID. 
So let's start doing this for real. What we want to do is make sure that we are storing the user somewhere. And when we don't have a user logged in, we will go ahead and make sure that this is set to null. Um, and when we do, we'll go ahead and, and store that user object here. So that user object has their name and their ID. Um, so we want that persistently stored in our application somewhere. We're gonna store it here for the moment, but we're gonna have to move this later. Um, so this allows us to have that user hang around and we, we want to use, um, let's pull up the docs again. And it was under our getting started here. We want to use this on auth state changed to go ahead and be notified when our user, uh, authentication state changes. So we're going to do this here to go ahead and store our user. So let's bring these up side by side. So we're going to be doing firebase.auth. That's our auth object. We're going to call on auth state changed and we are going to pass in a function that will go ahead and set user. This all has to go inside of an effect. So I am going to import use effect up here and run an effect. And here is where we're going to do our auth on auth state changed. And we're passing in our function. This function gets a user pass to it so we can set user to user and you know what to make this a little bit more clear because we have a user variable here and we have this user variable <clears throat> that's coming into this function provided to us by firebase authentication i'm going to call this variable our current user here So this, um, if it is the login that uh, the user has just logged in, then we'll have that user object filled in and we'll be setting it to that filled in user object. Otherwise, um, we'll be setting it to a falsy object here. And while we're at it, let's look at our docs here for um, this auth remember is this auth object inside of our documentation. So let's check out the on auth state changed here. So on auth state changed down here under methods, we pass in a function that gets a user. Um, you can also pass in a function here for handling errors. And there is a unsubscribe method that is returned that cancels this listener. So that's what I want to use here. I want to get that unsubscribe and return that inside of our effect so that React knows that when this component is no longer on the page, when it is unmounted, let's go ahead and return uh, let's use that unsubscribe method that's being returned. And I'm going to add an empty dependency array here, which means that this effect should only be run when the component is put on the page, and its unsubscribe should only be run when that component is removed from the page. And before we run this, uh, one thing that's really important to note is that this is inside of a use effect. So I can't I don't want to just put this code here at the top level of my component, which means that anytime my component re-renders, this on auth state change is going to get a new subscriber. So anytime is loading changes, which happens at least twice inside of our sign-in, we would end up with two new subscriptions to on auth state changed. 
when we put it into our use effect um, function, this will only run when our component is mounted because we have this empty array of dependencies here. So we'll only have one subscription. So let's get ready to test this. Um, we no longer need to store the result here or console log the result here because this will be triggered anytime the authorization state changes. So if we successfully logged in, that function will call, be called. If we successfully log out, that function will be called. So let's add in the sign out uh, button and, and put that on the page so that we can actually see the user being logged in and logged out. So we're gonna need a similar try catch here. And we will put that error on the page momentarily, but for now, let's just console log error. And then uh, we're gonna have a promise here for, for signing out. And let's find out what that method is by looking at our documentation. So currently we have this auth object that we can talk to. And we saw that there was the sign in with pop-up. There is also a sign out method. Sign out is a promise that resolves to nothing. So we don't actually get anything returned from it. So auth dot sign out. This doesn't return anything, but we still want to await it and catch any errors that might occur from trying to sign out. And let's add a button on the page here for sign out. So I've got a sign out button. The on click is set up to be this function here. So I should have a sign in button, a sign out button, and let's go ahead and console log off state changed. And let's console log current user. Go back to our application. I'm gonna give this a refresh. And we can see that already when our application loads, there is an auth state change that triggered. And there is this user object here with my uh, account that I had just logged in with. And that's part of why we are using on auth state changed is that by default, Firebase tries to persist that login inside of um, the browser. So we don't have to log in multiple times. You can control that inside of the Firebase. Uh, you can look up that in the Firebase docs. But why we have that on auth state changed added there is that this will catch, you know, when we open up the application and we already authenticated um, from last time, that function will be run. So we already have our current user in here. So if I go ahead and click sign out, we can see on auth state changed is called null is what's given to us uh, when we're logged out. So that's great. So we're flipping between an object and null. And then let's try signing in. And I'm gonna sign in with a different account this time. And we can see on auth state changed and logging in. I can see that different email address here. And if I look at my account and give this a refresh, I should now have two users in here, one for each Gmail address, unique user IDs here. And then if I were to sign out, we would get that on auth state change called and then null. And if I refresh this now that I have logged out, we're gonna get the first auth state change called with null. Okay, so looking at this, this that we set up here on auth state changed, we, we saw that it gets called when the application loads and Firebase figures out whether or not there's a user signed in, um, uh, in from the cached information from the last time they were on the page and it gets called anytime we do sign in or sign out. So that's why we're using it to pick up all of those situations and that means that we don't have to call set user here because we know that as soon as we trigger that sign in um, and it's been successful, this listener will be called.
Okay, so let's clean this up. We no longer need these to print out now that we've verified that it is working. Let's um, get our errors printing on the page. So here with sign out, I'm gonna set an error message that's a general error message that says something went wrong. Please try logging out again. Do a similar thing for sign in, something went wrong, please try logging in again. And this starter file that I've given you already has that state set up here with the error message, set error message, and it already has a component put on the page um, if that error message is set to something. So both of our sign in and sign out will clear the error message and then um, display an error message if there's a problem with that promise. So let's trigger a problem and hopefully we'll see it show up on the page. So I'm gonna sign in, but I'm going to not finish this. I'm gonna close it, I'm just gonna take a second and then something went wrong, please try logging in again. And this would be the situation where you probably in a production application wanna check this code and then give uh, more specific feedback to the user. So in this case, authorization pop-up was closed by the user. I would listen, I would check if the code is that, and I would say, hey, please try again, but don't close that pop-up. Um, and if the error message was something different, like pop-up blocked, we could then say like, hey, disable your pop-up blocker, uh, or disable ad blocker, you know, whatever it is that's triggering that block, um, so that the user knows, hey, it's not just a matter of clicking sign in again, Got you gotta make sure that that pop-up works before you click sign in again. Okay, so let's see, we've got our user here that is synced with on auth state change. We've got our sign in and sign out completed. So what we wanna do now is instead of putting these buttons here, um, we want to have this dynamic content area that gets put on the page. So if there is no user, then we'll display the sign in button and maybe give them a little bit of information about signing in. And if there is a user, we could go ahead and print out their name, like welcome back Mike, and uh, then give them a sign out button. So this type of conditional logic, uh, what we'll do here is we'll create, instead of this being a paragraph that says to do, this will be empty. So we got an empty variable here. And if we have a user, we'll do one thing. And if we don't, we'll do something else. So if we have a user, let's just, to test this working, um, we're gonna set this equal to a fragment here with a paragraph that says, welcome back. And let's do a similar thing down here that says log in. And we're gonna move our button for signing in to here and our button for signing out to here. So I'm using a React fragment here. If you are using an old version of React, you could just use a div to wrap around the contents. A fragment is a disappearing element. So when we put it on the page, here, it would just be a paragraph and a button that get inserted on the, into the page, not a div wrapped around a paragraph or a button. So this conditional logic should give us a simple way to see um, whether the user is signed in or not. And we can come back and fix this, um, improve it in a second. So here, not signed in, I got a sign in button, click it. When I pick one of these accounts, I should hopefully see welcome back, sign out, then I can sign out sign back in, use a different account this time. Perfect. So let's improve this a little bit. Let's make this a little bit more descriptive. So this will be when we're not signed in, we can say you can log in or create a new account by linking your Google account 
follow the instructions in the pop-up window. And then I also have in the CSS here just um, created a class for that button. Uh, so we have some styling for the whole form that's being displayed and then there's this button. So I want to use this class here, login form under underscore button to style this button. So class name equals login form button. Let's make sure that this is looking right. So because I left it on being signed in, I'm going to go ahead and sign out. We can see our paragraph. We can see our sign in with that styling being applied. Um, maybe I'll, I'm going to change this to be log in. And what we can do is because I have this piece of state for loading and we set it to be true here and false here, we can have a little bit of indication in the user interface that something's happening. Um, so instead of just saying log in here, we can use our ternary conditional operator. So if we're loading, let's go ahead and print out logging in. Otherwise, we can print out log in. So if we're loading, it'll say logging in. Otherwise, it'll say log in. And while we're at it, we might as well disable our button when we are logging in. So disabled equals is loading. So if we're loading, make sure that this button is disabled. It shows its disabled styles and doesn't allow that sign in button to be triggered multiple times. So logging in, we can see it disables. I can't click it multiple times. It's grayed out using the default browser styling. It say, says logging in. And then if I go ahead and click one of my accounts, welcome back. So let's do the same thing for our um, welcome back here. So I am going to grab this button and use it up here. And instead of on click being sign in, I'm going to fix this to be sign out. And um, we're, we're using is loading. We're reusing that here for signing out. So I can use that variable. Uh, when sign out starts, it's true. When it finishes, it's false. So let's do logging out, log out. Uh, and I'm just gonna make this capital to keep things consistent. So let's see if this is working. So it looks like the styling is working. Log out happens really, really quickly. So I didn't even see that um, loading message displaying. But looks like it's working. So now let's also update this because we have that user object here, which we learned had these different properties like display name, email, photo URL, um, provider data, user ID. We can grab some of those from our user object and display them on the page. For the purposes of our application, we're probably only going to use the display name and the unique ID. So display name, it's going to be a string or null. And if I go back up and click on user ID, this is the uh, string of the user's unique ID. So those are stored inside of our user object, so we could destructure them. We could say display name UID equals user. And then we could say welcome back display name. Put another paragraph, you can log out below. And just for testing purposes, let's put that user ID on the page so that we can see it. So welcome back, it has my name from my account. You can log out below and here is our 
unique ID for our user, which um, if we look back here, that lines up with this user's UID, which is what we're going to use when we go ahead and create a new user's collection here. So each of these movies is stored with a unique ID, and that's um, similar to what we're going to do here. We're going to create a new movies, a new user's collection, and we're going to use this user's ID to store their user information inside of that collection. One thing that I want to note is that you know, this user ID itself is not a secure piece of information. Like I'm putting it on the page here, which means that anyone watching the video knows this user ID, uh, but that does not mean that the anyone will be able to get into this user's collection with this user ID, because some of the work that our authentication library from Firebase does under the hood is making sure that the user that's logged in here um, is me um, and then gives us access to this ID. So this will actually, even though it doesn't seem secure, uh, will turn into something secure when we want to lock things down in our database to make sure that we have movies just for me um, and we have movies just for you and we can't edit each other's parts of the database. So let's flip back. We don't need to put this user ID on the page anymore. So I'm going to get rid of that give this a save. Good. And maybe this, I'm just gonna make this into one paragraph. Welcome back. You can log out below. Good. The last thing that I want to do in this video is, is set us up so that in the next video, we could start using this user ID for storing information, uh, which means that we can't store the user here because anywhere where we want to talk to the database, we need to know the user's user ID. So we're going to need to know it in movie listing, and we're going to need to know it in add movie and in edit movie so that we can actually put data under the user's account. So there are a couple ways that we can do that, but the, the big strategy that we learned last time or in uh, CodeSprint B w was to uh, elevate this piece of data. So instead of putting it into account info, which is loaded here, we could put that state here in app, which means that the nav could have access to it, the account page, the movies page, the ad movies page, et cetera, could all have access to that user. So what I'm gonna do is go into account info, and I wanna grab this code here and remove it and paste it in here. So I'm going to have to import use state and use effect from React. Use state, use effect. And then what I need to do is this user needs to be passed in to our account page because our account page um, down here is the thing that loads the account info, which is here, which needs our user. So right now, if I look at my console, uh, my terminal window here, it's telling me that I, I'm going to have some errors. Oh, actually, I forgot to save this, so I'm not even seeing the errors from this file. Um, but we're, we're getting an error from, oh, app, because we need to import provider and auth. Uh, or actually, we just need to import auth there, because uh, we're using on auth state change. So let's add that here, import auth from data Firebase. That'll make that one go away, but now we're seeing the error that I was hoping we'd see is our account info page. It still needs the user, so we still need to pass that user in. So what we're going to do is account page. We're going to say, here's the user. So this variable is always going to be synced by our effect here. Uh, so it'll always maintain the latest information we have from Firebase about who's logged in. And then we can pass that to our account page. And if I go to the account page, I have to pass that down to the account info. So I can say props, and then I could say user equals props.user. 
and then I could go into my account info and up at the top here say the local variable user is equal to props.user. And we should, fingers crossed, have things working again. Uh, let's, this paused on the debugger from a previous compile, it looks like. Ah, I, uh, looks like I made a mistake here. So it's, it's telling me I tried to destructure uh, props.user, which isn't what I meant to do. So I'm going to go to account info seven. Um, yes, whoops. So uh, you could either do user equals props.user or you could destructure and say user equals props. Give this a save, run it again. Okay, so it looks like I'm logging in. I'm able to log out. I'm able to log back in again. And even though this is the same logic, what that means is that we have elevated the user up to the app level. So any component would be able to access it right now. One thing that I wanna show you here, instead of writing this logic here, we can do this. We can use the spread operator, which does the equivalent of what we did up here. So any prop that has been passed in to our account page is forwarded on to our account info um, by doing the spread operator here. So if our props, just imagine our props looked like this. We've got our user is null, and, and maybe there was other information that we wanted to store here, like uh, cash, use cash. Provider, Google. Um, if that's what the props object looks like, doing this destructuring would be the equivalent of saying user equals props.user, use cash equals props.use cash, provider equals props.provider. So it provides an easy way for us to kind of forward props along without having to know what they are at this stage of rendering. So whatever props get passed to account page get forwarded on by using the um, array, the spread operator here for our object. And if our props looked like this, that would be the equivalent of what would happen. In our case, our props just look like this with um, having a user. So it is as if we had just done this line here. But this will be a little bit more flexible in the future if we decide that we need to pass in some more props along to our account info. So save that. Looks like things are still working. Let's make a small tweak uh, to show the power of what we just did. So we passed our user into our account page. Let's actually pass it into our nav so that in our nav bar here, we could have it say log in when the user is not logged in and it could say account when the user is logged in. So if we go to our nav, that's a matter of just changing this link here, the text. So let's declare that we have props, props.user. We're going to use a ternary operator to say, okay, if we have a user, let's display account. Otherwise, let's display login. So flipped to account because it recognized that we were logged in. When I log out, it flips to log in. Let's test it one more time. Log in with a different account. You can see it shifts to account. And maybe 
Let's do one more thing before we cap off this video. Uh, I want to make it so that if someone is logged out, they cannot go to movies, they cannot go to add movie. So they must log in first. So if we go back to app, what we want to do is inside of here, enforce that if our user is null. So if we don't have a user, don't let them access any routes on our application that actually need authentication. So what we can use here, let's, let's create a Boolean variable that says whether or not we are authenticated. So this variable is just doing a comparison to see whether the user is null and storing a true false value. So this will either be true or false. It's true if we are logged in, it's false if we're not. And then we can use that later. Um, so what we can do is take advantage of the redirect component in React Router. So if I pull up the docs here for web and look down at our components, there is a redirect component, which if you render it, will redirect you, navigate you to a new page. And you can see an example here that um, uh, sets up a route that redirects if you're logged into the dashboard, otherwise to a public home page, which is essentially what we want to do. We want to check if they're logged in and go ahead and redirect. Um, oh, actually, we, we kind of want to do the opposite here. <laughs> if, we, if we're logged in, we'll kind of let them access the route. Otherwise, we'll, we'll send them to the login page. So if we wanted to do that, we could do that here. We could wrap this and say is authenticated question. Um, if they're authenticated, they're allowed to reach it. Otherwise, we will go ahead and redirect them to the account page. So I'm going to need to import redirect. and pass in the to parameter, hey, go to account. So I've now made this route protected. If I flip back to my browser, um, try to go to all movies, I'm not allowed to because I'm not logged in. But if I go to add movie, I can go there. So what I want to do is go ahead and replicate this logic for our other protected routes. So copy and paste this into these, and then I'm going to replace the component that gets rendered. Give it a save. Now I shouldn't be allowed to go to add, uh, or I can't go to all add, and I can't go to edit. They will all take me back to this login page. So if I click login, though, pick one of my accounts, now I can go ahead to go to any page. log back out this is fine this works but we, we did have to copy and paste a fair bit so let me show you one advanced way to, to clean this up so let's create a new component here So I'm creating a component that returns a route. It accepts some props. Um, and what we're going to do is pass in is authenticated children route props. So it's going to have an is authenticated property, true or false. It is going to have some children, some child elements, and then we are capturing all of the rest of the props here into route props. So we can pass those along here, route props. And then we can do our is authenticated check. So is authenticated, great, then go ahead and use the children. Otherwise, we are going to do our redirect to account. Give that a save, and I'm going to use this in place of our route here. So I'm going to show you what happens.
Okay, so this is the structure that we would use to set up, uh, to use this um, authenticated route component that we created. Authenticated route is really just a route from React Router with a little bit of extra logic. So this is, ends up being passed in as the children prop. Is authenticated here is our true false that is being passed in. And then the rest of these props end up in route props here and they get passed on to our route. Then our route goes ahead and checks is authenticated. If we are, let's render those children. Otherwise, let's redirect to account and we won't let them access this route. So let me give this a save, make sure it works. So I'm gonna try and go to all movies. It is redirecting me, but then if I log in, Go to all movies, we're good. So our, our authenticated route, it's just a wrapper around a route component that has this conditional logic that we were doing embedded within it. So you can totally use this structure that we used here, um, but the thing is that this requires more copy and pasting and maintenance when you're creating all of your routes. And this authenticated route wraps up our logic for making sure that we're logged in before accessing whatever child elements are passed in. And if we're not authenticated, then it takes us back to our account page. So you can do either in your application. I do recommend um, getting comfortable with this kind of abstraction. Um, because then it makes it really easy for us to set up our add page here. It's going to set up the path. We no longer need the exact. And then we do add movie page. And similar deal here. Going to give us a copy and paste. Now the path is edit ID and edit movie page. Do one last test. Go ahead and log in. Oh, actually, before I log in, let's try navigating around. So wait for this to error out. Let's try going to these other pages. We can't. Now let's log in. And now go to these other pages. Make sure edit still works. Yes, we're all good. Okay, so that is it for this video. We will pick up next time with actually refactoring our data so that each user has their own movies. Right now it's set up so that you still have, you have to log in to get access, but then everyone is editing the same movies. So we'll fix that in the next video. Um, quick review, we set up our account info here to use our authorization object um, to go ahead and sign in with Google provider. We set up a sign out button, and then we made sure that we had our user elevated, this user info, uh, elevated to our app so that we could pass it in to any component that needed it, which is going to be essential to the next piece that we do. Uh, we're gonna need to pass the user to the movies page, the add movie page, edit movie page, so that we can use their ID to find their data.